this episode, we're going to have a look with Active Storage and uploading documents. However, we are going to do this with a little bit of a twist. So I'll select a document, and it is a PDF document, and then we'll create our record. You'll see we got an image preview of our PDF, but then it also performed the OCR on it, which stands for the Optical Character Recognition. And so this is going to work with a PDF, or it's also going to work with images. So I'll select the image variant of that same PDF, but now it's a PNG image, and we'll create the record, and you'll see that it also performed the OCR on an image as well. And we can do this with more complicated ones. So for this one, I had a printed out document, I scanned it, and then it's going to perform the OCR. And this worked as expected. And doing this is going to have a lot of benefits because a lot of times when we're talking about images or PDFs that we're uploading, they're not searchable. And so this all came about because I have a receipts application that I've created, which tracks all of my expenses. And I'll take a picture or I'll upload a PDF version of the receipt. But sometimes I want to go back and find something that I purchased, but I sometimes don't remember what vendor or what date I purchased it on. So having this searchable text, I'm going to be able to do that. And for the generated text, it's not something that I'm intending to display on the screen. However, it is something where we are saving that content to an attribute, and then we can query against that attribute. So in this episode, we're going to look at the ability in uploading a document or an image, then having an optical character recognition performed on it. And we're not going to be doing any machine learning with this, which is something that you would need to do if you wanted to perform the optical character recognition on handwriting or something like that. So it is expecting printed text, but it could be an image, a PDF, or even a scanned image of that printed text. And did you know that you can go to railstore.com to get your own Ruby on Rails t-shirt or your Drift and Ruby t-shirt? To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the pro membership.